Macarthur with Explorers. Welcome back. Hi, my name's Carolyn and I work for the Macarthur Centre for Sustainable Living. And today we're going to create a really beautiful artwork out of paint and some paper. And this is a puffer fish. Okay, so it's a different technique and we're going to use forks to actually create this spiky, spiny effect on our paper. Okay, now some people like to use disposable forks, uh, plastic forks. I don't want to do that. So I just get my oldest forks and use those and I keep them in my paint kit for other activities I might want to use them for um, and it'll be quite reusable that way. Okay, okay, so what do we need to get started? We need a blue piece of paper if you have it. If you don't, just use whatever colour you have. And we need some yellow paint, we need some white paint, glue stick, we need a couple of paint trays and two different forks, one that we're going to use for yellow and one for white. We don't want to be mixing them up. Uh, you'll need a ruler, you'll also need some scissors and a bread and butter plate, some scrap paper to create the eyes with and as a different bit of a trick I've got some paper towels um, or serviettes that we're going to use underneath the paper and I'll explain a little bit more in detail in a minute. A lead pencil and a black texture just to do the eyes with as well. Okay, so it's a bit of a different technique. So what we're going to do is get our piece of blue paper, put it on the table. We're going to get a bit of a shape happening. So to do that I've just got this plate, popped it on top of the paper it can be smaller if you like or bigger, it's up to you what you want to do. Trace around the plate and that gives us a circle which is probably hard to see with the dark blue paper but it gives us a bit of a guide as to where we're going to do the paint. Okay, <clears throat> generally what we do is find about the halfway mark. I don't particularly measure but I'm just giving myself a rough line through the middle of the circle. So that we have a semicircle top and bottom. Okay, that's so that we can then decide how much we do yellow and how much we do white. It's easier for the kids to actually know where to go to with each colour. Now, I then put the paper towel or the serviettes underneath half of the paper, top half, bottom half, whichever one you want to go with first. I went with yellow first because. On our little diagram here, diagram, on our picture here we have two fins out of yellow and then white is on top, so the white's going to be last. So we're going to do the yellow first, let it dry, and then come back with the white and add the features on our yellow section. Okay, so we're going to get our paint, put plenty in. We need the fork to have quite a lot of paint on it, and we're lying the fork down into the paint that's covering all of the back of the fork. And then it's basically a technique of just dragging the fork out. You can do long strokes, you can do short strokes, it doesn't particularly matter. It's a little bit tricky to show you and I'll, I'll doing it backwards as well. But we're just doing long strokes, keep getting as much paint as you can, make them come in different ways. You can even just do at the front of the fork if you want it to be smaller. Lots of paint is good. I'm doing it backwards. I'm going to turn it to the side so I get a better feel. There we go. So it's just long, flicky strokes to get our yellow spikes on this top half of our fish. Now you can go over that borderline a little bit. It's just a guide. It's not an exact science. We're just trying to kind of change the angle as well of which way our spikes are going so that we um, get that happening. Then we do two triangles. They're upside down triangles at the top. So we're going to have the point and then come out to make the fin. So point down at the, the fish with the base away. So hopefully you can understand the points down here and then the, the base of the triangle is up. So you're going to do two of those. The reason we are doing the 
paper towels or the serviettes underneath is I noticed when I did it with the fork it needed to push down into the paper to create the better effect when it was straight flat on a table I couldn't get enough um, flex with the fork and it didn't give me a, a nice enough effect so having that flexibility is really good okay so once you've done your yellow spikes and your yellow fins we're going to put that to the side to dry okay so now i've got one i prepared earlier so here's one from earlier nice and dry so now we have to do our white paint so <clears throat> i just turned it upside down this time obviously we're using the white paint so we're getting a bit more paint in there okay now we want to make sure that we have lots of paint coating each fork but not too much joining them or you get blobbiness which happened in my early one so now we're going to do the strokes of white now this fork is shaped nicer than the other yellow fork so it actually is sitting better on the paper okay and we just have them changing angle all the way getting any excess off and just creating that spiky effect the kids will have fun with this because it's just something different painting with a different thing other than a paintbrush I think for kids is really fun they um, just enjoy a different technique and if this doesn't work for you that's okay get them to do it with a paintbrush and and um, change the technique altogether with something else you might put a blob of paint and then you get a stick and they're scraping the paint out with a stick so that that might be how they want to do it now I went a little bit overboard on one section so I'm going to use that paper towel or the serviette just to pat down where I didn't want it to go and that's fine okay so here we have our puffer fish and I need to put a little bit in the, the um, I keep wanting to say ears, in the fin part. So we just do one stroke back. There we go. It went a little bit too far. If that happens, just wipe it off very carefully. Okay, probably harder doing it backwards as well. Take some of that off. We'll do it this way. That's better. So it's all a bit of technique and trial and error to see what works. And putting it on that serviette just gets that white paint to work properly. Okay, that's how we're looking so far. So now we need to put on some eyes and a mouth. Once again, I've used my uh, leftover junk paper from an envelope and I have traced a glue stick to create two eyes. Okay, so we just glue them on to the yellow part of the paint. Even though the white paint isn't dry yet, we can actually glue these eyes on now. And then it can all sit and dry together. I think if we waited for the white paint to dry, the yellow paint to dry, sometimes the kids can get a little bit bored that it's taking too long. So um, if they've only got to wait for the yellow to dry, that's fine. Okay, I also then used a um, bit, of, bit of the envelope to draw an oval and I've cut that out and then I'm just going to fill it in. Now a lot of pictures when you see a puffer fish, they're going with their mouth. So their mouth is open quite a lot. So the darkness, we're going to draw a, a dark oval in the middle of that to be like the inside of their mouth. Okay, so we're just going to colour in an oval that's black I'll show you in a second okay so that we've got our white oval and then a black oval in the middle of it okay a little bit of glue on the top of that on the back of that sorry and it can glue then onto wherever you would like to form your mouth okay my paint is still a little bit wet so I put it on there and there you have it there is our puffer fish. Okay, put it away, let it dry, and obviously, this is how this one has turned out. A little bit better than the one I just showed you. 
Okay, so today I hope you have enjoyed this craft. It's a really easy one to do. A little bit of a different technique and kids will find it lots of fun. See you next time. Bye for now.